We have all heard of OPEC Plus and the high-profile production cut they just announced. But a lot of Americans are asking why OPEC Plus has gotten back in control of oil prices. What about US oil fracking? What about the Permian Basin? What about all of that wildcatting that crashed oil prices back in 2014? Where is all of that oil production capacity when we need it most? Well, my friends, it seems like the days of the US shale boom may be over. Shale fracking production rising at a much slower rate than it did before the 2020 crash. And frackers are not showing no signs of ramping up. A combination of factors. Supply chain constraints. Inflation. And new shareholder-focused strategy of shale companies. These factors have all conspired to transform how the shale fracking industry operates. Shale production is now facing headwinds. And OPEC Plus has regained its position as the world's swing producer. OPEC Plus said that they will cut crude oil production by 2 million barrels per day. OPEC Plus is a group, but they are mostly controlled by Saudi Arabia. And its high-profile leader, Mohammed bin Salman, or MBS as he is known. What does this mean for consumers? What does this mean for energy markets? What does this mean for oil companies? What does it mean for the US economy? And what does it mean for the future of the United States? But, before we get into all of that, please hit the like button and leave us a comment below. We would love to hear from you. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you are notified of upcoming videos when they are released. The days of explosive growth in US shale oil production are over. Oil production in the United States is rising. But, it is increasing at a far slower pace than it did before the pandemic. And the meager rise is at lower rates than everyone expected just a few months ago. That is mainly because there are new priorities in the shale patch. First, there is capital discipline and a focus returning capital to shareholders repaying debt. Second, supply chain constraints. Third, and cost inflation. Fourth, the Biden administration's mixed signals to the American oil and gas industry. These factors have conspired to drag down U.S. oil production growth. And the oil industry is blamed for high gasoline prices. Also, a threat of higher taxes is not motivating U.S. producers, either. Most frackers are reluctant to commit to spending millions more on drilling. What is worse, there does not seem to be any medium to long-term vision. There is no federal plan on how the U.S. oil and gas resources could be used to increase America's energy security. To say nothing about the energy security of Western allies who depend on oil imports. Oil industry analysts have downgraded their forecasts of crude oil production for 2022 and 2023. Although they still expect U.S. oil output to increase to a new annual average record next year. But, these projections have been repeatedly revised downward since the start of this year. Oil firm executives are blaming Biden administration's policies. Anti-oil rhetoric. Inflation. Contractor time delays. And regulatory uncertainty. These factors are all negatively impacting drilling and production planning. Oil industry analysts expect U.S. crude oil production to average 11.7 million barrels per day this year. But they expect an increase to 12.4 million barrels per day in 2023. Actually, that would surpass the record high set in 2019. Despite the expectation of a record output next year. Lower crude oil production in the forecast reflects lower crude oil prices in 4Q22 than we previously expected, said analysts in October. Prior to the Russian invasion of Ukraine, analysts expected U.S. production growth of 900,000 barrels per day this year. However, raging inflation and critical supply chain delays scuttled that growth. Growth was also muted due to the headwinds created by oilfield services limitations. Drillers were also scared by the risk of recession. And reduced performance from recently drilled wells drilled in the Permian Basin. The Permian Basin is the largest oil fracking area in the world. It is located in western Texas and eastern New Mexico. Because of that confluence of factors oil production forecast has been significantly downgraded. Analysts now expect growth of around 450,000 barrels per day growth in 2022. And 560,000 barrels per day growth for 2023. The U.S. shale patch is no longer the swing oil producer, said a top oil industry executive. OPEC Plus is now back in the driver's seat as the most important factor in oil supply fundamentals. Shale was thought of as a swing producer, the Saudis and OPEC have waited this out, the executive continued. 
Now, really OPEC is back in the driver's seat where they are the swing producer, Hess Corp CEO John Hess said at a conference in Miami last week. Hess said that US crude oil production will average 13 million barrels per day over the next few years. And that is basically where it is going to stay. Wall Street investors are pressuring US oil companies more than ever before. They are demanding a laser focus on returning money to shareholders. Not the wildcatting of aggressive growth strategies. The current state of affairs of the US oil industry stand in stark contrast most of the past decade. Between 2009 and 2019, US oil producers ran wild. They captured almost all of the incremental global consumption. US liquids production increased by 10 million BD from 2011 to 2022, recounted Hess. That was capturing a scarcely believable 10% of global supply in the process, Hess also said. Almost 6 million barrels per day of that increase came from the lower 48 US states. And two-thirds from the Permian Basin alone. The rest of the increase came from natural gas liquids produced from shale gas plays. US oil and gas production continues to increase modestly in 2022. Producers in the shale patch are blaming labor and equipment shortages. They also continue to blame the Biden administration's inconsistent policies. The administration's lack of understanding of the oil and gas investment cycle continues to result in inconsistent energy policies that contribute to rising energy costs, said an oil services company executive. This continued inconsistency increases uncertainty and decreases investments in energy infrastructure, the executive continued. We are in an energy death spiral that will lead to higher highs and lower lows. Volatility will increase, and the public is in for a very difficult ride, the executive also added. But, not every important American executive agrees with this analysis. The US should pump more oil amid the world's energy crisis, said JP Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon. Dimon made his statement to Congress just days after OPEC Plus, the organization of the petroleum exporting countries met. OPEC Plus announced a production cut of 2 million barrels per day, starting in November. That is the equivalent to 2% of the global crude oil supply. Obviously, America needs to play a real leadership role, said Diamond. The United States is the swing producer, not Saudi Arabia, Diamond told reporters in an interview this week. And we should have gotten that right starting in March, Diamond added. It's almost too late to get it right because obviously, this is a longer-term investment, Diamond also noted. Crude oil prices have risen sharply following the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Russia has been a major global exporter of oil and gas. The United States is teetering on the brink of recession. Russian natural gas supplies to Europe have ended due to damage to the Nord Stream pipelines. Diamond called that development, pretty predictable. In my view, America should have been pumping more oil and gas, he Diamond told reporters. The US is the world's largest producer of oil, Diamond said. The United States produces almost 19 million barrels of oil every day. But the United States is also the largest consumer of oil in the world. So, there is only so much crude oil available for export. And, until 2016, oil exports of crude oil from the United States were illegal. Saudi Arabia produces 10.8 million barrels of crude oil per day, which is just over half of what the US produces. But Saudi Arabia uses only about 3.2 million barrels per day. They export the rest. Saudi Arabia is basically the de facto OPEC plus leader and major exporter. The United States has huge crude oil reserves. But oil production cannot be boosted overnight. This should be treated almost as a matter of war at this point, nothing short of that, Diamond added. For those of you not familiar with OPEC plus, it is a group of some of the world's largest and most powerful oil producing countries. OPEC plus includes Saudi Arabia, Russia, Iran, Iraq, Algeria, Nigeria, and other oil-producing nations. It does not include the United States or Canada, two of the world's largest oil-producing countries. Saudi Arabia is seen as the informal leader of OPEC+. Crude oil prices peaked in June at more than $120 per barrel. But, fears of the prospect of a global economic recession have put oil prices on a persistent downward trend since then. And, High oil prices typically bring about demand destruction as people drive less when gasoline prices are higher. The production cut of 2 million barrels per day is intended to reverse this decline in oil prices. US President Joe Biden has repeatedly asked the group to keep prices low by keeping production up. 
OPEC Plus is scheduled to meet again on December 4th in Vienna. But, what do you think? Please hit the like button and leave us a comment below. We would love to hear from you. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you are notified of upcoming videos when they are released. Please share this video on social media. Thank you for watching.